Welcome back to the channel guys. Today we're gonna break down three top water mistakes that I used to make all the time. It keeps me from catching the most amount of bass possible. And while top water is one of the most fun ways to catch bass, sometimes these couple mistakes can hold you back from catching the most amount of bass possible. So we're gonna go through the three biggest ones that I used to make all the time. The last one is super important. It's helped me catch more bass than anything else when fishing with top waters. So stay tuned, let's get right into it. We'll have you catching more bass on a top water in no time. So with top water season finally here, we're in the fall transition. Fish are gonna start moving shallow and they're gonna be eating a top water very, very soon. I figured we'd go over a couple things that I used to do when my fishing top waters that kept me from catching as many bass as I possibly could. Ever since I switched these up and started focusing on these mistakes and making sure I'm not making them as much, I've been catching a lot more bass on a top water and having a lot more fun with it. So the first one we're gonna focus on, this one was a huge one with me um, and a lot of people I feel like fall into the same trap and it's getting stuck on color too much, especially with the top water more than anything else. There are some days a black and blue jig will outfish a black jig or something like that, or a green pumpkin bait will outfish a watermelon red bait when you're fishing a Senko. But when it really comes to top waters, I do not get complicated at all with colors anymore. I really, really, really keep it simple and I throw a white base color. More importantly, just focus on the belly color of your bait in general. My number one choice is going to be a white bait. That's the one I'm gonna go with nine times out of 10. Then on a sunny day, I will go with something of chrome if I wanna get a little bit more flash when that sun's out, that chrome hits it better, especially if you have some clear water or schooling fish that are chasing shiny bait fish, like if you fish on Hartwell or something like that where they chase blueback herring, a shiny color like this on a sunny day will draw their attention much better just because that's what the bait fish look like. But realistically, when these fish are feeding on bait fish, if they're looking up at a top water, they're only gonna see a white belly, whether it's a bluegill, whether it's a perch, whether it's a shad, whatever it is, nine times out of 10 fish have a white belly. So whether it's white on the bottom, chrome on the bottom, that's usually what I focus on. The only time I stray from that is going to be in a frog or a whopper plopper. And I will throw a black whopper plopper sometimes just to give them a little bit something different. Oftentimes when the water is cloudy or when it's very dark outside, if it's cloudy outside, I'll throw that dark whopper plopper to try and stand out a little bit. And then in a frog, I'll throw like a black or a red or something like that to imitate bluegills sometimes when they get up shallow. Those spawning bluegills get that real red chest. Um, sometimes the red frog just works a little bit better, but really that's the only colors that I throw when it comes to a top water. If I really wanted to keep it simple, I could catch just as many top water fish on the hard bait side, just throwing a white one and never even throwing the chrome, but those two colors side by side really, really work well. Um, even bone and white are interchangeable. You could get a bone color or a white color, it does not matter. Just get something that is a solid, opaque, matte finish and then something that's shiny and you'll be just fine and then grab a black whopper plopper and a black frog and a white frog and you're good to go. Um, that's pretty much all I really fish. Uh, I will throw a white whopper plopper as well. So in reality, that's like six baits or whatever. Um, on the top water walking baits, I throw white and chrome. Everything else, I throw white and chrome, poppers, prop baits, any of that stuff. And then a whopper plopper, it's white or black. And then the frog, it's pretty much black or white as well. So keeping it simple with those colors will have you catching more bass in no time. But my second mistake that I really needed to focus on, this was one that I really fell into a lot and it's having a favorite top water. This one was mine right here. This is a Strike King Sexy Dog. I've had this thing since I was like eight years old. It has all the hook rash. I've changed hooks on this thing probably 10 times. I will literally go swimming for this bait right here. So whenever I go top water fishing and I go, wow, it's a really nice day for top water. The first thing I do is reach in my box and tie this one on when I have bunches of other top waters, more importantly, different shapes and silhouettes. Um, this top water is a great top water and a walk the dog bait is awesome. You have to have a walk the dog bait. But what I mean by having a favorite top water is if you really love throwing a walk the dog bait, you're missing out on the rest of the top waters that are available to choose from. Um, I really believe that there are certain times that you have to throw certain top waters and it'll have you catching more fish. My favorite, they all have their own place, but my favorite is the walk the dog bait. It covers a ton of water. You can throw it pretty much near any type of cover. 
It will mimic all types of shad. You can catch schooling fish. You can fish it fast. You can fish it slow. It's just a really good top water to do a lot of things with. But there are other things that are very beneficial as well from other top waters. Like I love throwing a prop bait now from going to Florida. This thing is amazing for pre-spawn and post-spawn bass. Right now, this isn't a great bait, but when you're target casting to bass on beds or other places that they'll hang around by shallow cover, guarding fry, other stuff, this twitch and pause motion really gets them to bite where you might not catch them on the walk the dog bait. So that's an excellent top water that you have to have as well. Another great one for when the bait fish are smaller or when you're target casting to certain objects like rocks and wood up on the bank or next to lily pads or a patch of grass is a popper. A popper is a great one as well. This is an excellent pond bait. It catches a ton of fish. It was one of the first top waters I've ever thrown in a pond and I caught tons of bass on it because that pop and stop motion really gets them going on top of this bait just being very small compared to a walk the dog bait. I mean, even this walk the dog bait here is a small version and this thing is half the size of it. So when the bait fish are smaller, a popper is a great way to go, especially if they don't wanna chase that walking bait all the way away from the piece of cover that they're hanging on. Um, another great one to have is the whopper plopper. If you think you can cover a lot of water on the walking bait, you can really cover a lot of water on this, walk, this whopper plopper here. I mean, you can just throw this thing, reel it down the bank and cover a ton of water. An alternative to this one would be a buzz bait. Um, they pretty much do the same thing, except this one floats when you stop it. So a lot of times I'll lean towards the whopper plopper over a buzz bait, but those are both great ones to have as well. And then if you fish any lake that has heavy vegetation, you have to have a frog. Um, just having a frog will allow you to catch more fish in heavier cover, thicker cover. Um, I've caught some giant bass and some very heavy cover on top water just by throwing a frog where none of these other baits would even be able to get close to where I was catching these fish at. Um, so it's just an excellent bait to have as well. So while I have a favorite top water and I love throwing a walk the dog bait and that's my favorite one to use and that's the most exciting to me, I like having all five of these top waters just because it allows me to cover different types of fish, different moods of fish whenever they're feeding on certain things, different types of cover. It allows me to do a lot more with the top water than just throw a walk the dog bait and if they're not eating it, they're not eating it. I can adjust my top water selection here and be able to catch more fish on different types of top waters out there on the water. And for my last top water mistake, we're actually gonna have to head out on the water to talk about what this one is. Like I said, this is a super important one and it has caught me more fish just by changing up this one thing about top water fishing. So let's head out on the water and show you what this mistake is so you can be catching more bass on a top water in no time. So the last mistake when it comes to fishing a top water is not mixing up your retrieve enough. I fall into this one more than anything else. It's so common to just go out there, you want to throw your top water you cast it out there you're fishing a walking bait and you just slow and steady walk it back to the boat and do nothing else with your retrieve with a whopper plopper it could be throw it out there and just reel it back in or a popper you throw it out there and pop it once and let it sit pop it once let it sit you do the same retrieve over and over and over and over again and it's not that it won't work a walk the dog on a steady walk the dog retrieve will work great and you will catch fish but i've found sometimes if you just play around with it to find the mood of the fish sometimes if you find that retrieve that they really like you'll catch even more so sometimes with the walk the dog bait you can throw it out there and it might be just a couple of twitches and then a pause and then a couple more walks and let it pause they might not want to move very fast and they might want to sit in one area for that bait so if you pause it next to a piece of cover you might be able to get a bite or if you have a really aggressive schooling fish i've found where you twitch it so fast that the bait's blowing out of the water and going crazy you'll catch a bunch of fish doing it that way it all depends on what the mood of the fish is and you just have to work it to find that mood of the fish and just mix up your retrieve by mixing up your retrieve you're eventually going to find the right one for the given day i always start with the regular retrieves if you're fishing a popper throw it next to a piece of cover pop it let it sit if you're throwing a walk the dog bait i'll throw it up there and i'll just slow and steady walk it in i'll always start with the regular retrieve but if for some reason it's not working one of the first things i'll change before i change my bait or color or take off a of top water entirely is i'll change my retrieve and see if i can get them to eat something else a different way maybe work it a different way that they haven't seen before maybe everyone else is out there just walking the dog nice and slow and if you throw it out there and work it erratically you might get more bites than everybody else out there doing the same thing i hope you guys enjoyed today's video talking about some top water mistakes and i hope it'll catch you some more bass along the way if you want to see another top water technique that you need to be trying catching a bunch of fish throughout the late summer and early fall check this video out right here 
If you enjoyed today's video, leave a like down below and make sure you hit that subscribe button. And thanks for watching.